get to questions, we'll start with Eric Bailey from the Tulsa World and then go to Joe Bettner. Eric? Hey, Nick, I was just curious. Uh, when, when adversity strikes during a football game, um, which defensive teammate is the loudest and most encouraging uh, on the sideline? Well, I'd probably say either Pat Fields or Ronnie Perkins. Those are probably two of the guys that the rest of the defense looks to, you know, for leadership. So, uh, you know, I feel like, you know, those are definitely the two guys that when we go through adversity, you know, they'll be the main ones to speak out or, you know, tell us, like, all right, like, let's get going, stuff like that. Thanks, Nick. Have a good week. You too. Okay, let's go to uh, Joe Bettner and then Jason Kersey. Hey, Nick. I'm curious when you have an athletic quarterback like Spencer Sanders coming up and you've had, obviously, two weeks to prepare. What does that do for you guys as a defense as far as preparation and trying to be ready for a running type quarterback, uh, which seems like it hasn't been too many this season, but just kind of the challenge that he presents to you all as a defense. Yeah, and we definitely needed the two weeks to prepare for him because, you know, obviously going against a, a dual threat quarterback, you know, you got a, a lot to game plan for. So, you know, we're preparing for him because he can also throw the ball as well. So, you know, we just had to be ready for, you know, him keeping it on the ground or, you know, just him pulling it back and trying to air it out. So, you know, I feel like we've done a great job preparing that so far, and we're just going to see how it works on Saturday. Thanks, Nick. Jason Kersey and then Ryan Aber. Nick, the, your defensive front has been so good this year. I'm just curious. I'm just wondering if you could sort of, from your perspective, explain how Coach Thibodeau and Coach Kane have worked together. Um, seems to be a pretty good pairing. Oh, yeah, they've done a great job together. Um, shoot, uh, we always come together. Like, after practice, we always go through stuff, uh, different calls, different uh, lineups that the offensive line likes to do over there and uh, different things they like to do. So I feel like they've done a great job of, you know, cooperating together. You know, working together on different um, packages that we run. So uh, I feel like those two have definitely done a great job. And I feel like you can see the results in the field as well. Thanks, Nick. Ryan Aber and Bob Prisbillo. Yeah, Nick, I know uh, back in high school, you played in a lot of different areas in the front seven. How did that prepare you for, for what you're being asked to do this year with the, from that rush linebacker spot and, and sort of the versatility that you have to have there? Yeah, yeah. High school, I, I played like a lot of uh, outside, and then uh, they also let me rush inside as well. So, you know, I was kind of already used to it. And you know, I feel like when Coach Grinch does those type of stuff, I feel like okay, and I, I feel like I can adapt well to these different type of scenarios because I've already done it before. So, um, just you know, helping Coach Grinch and being versatile, you know, I feel like that's a big key for me. So, you know, I'm just doing whatever the defense needs me to do. Did you expect that though to be your role uh, when you when you came to OU? Uh, I didn't know what my role was going to be lacking, but you know I'm, I'm just happy you know where I can get in where I fit in really. So appreciate it, Nick. No problem. Okay, Bob Prisbillo and then Keegan Rennell. And Nick, we've asked you be before about uh, what Coach Kane has brought to the table for you, but what's Coach Kane like during the course of a game? Is 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 he quiet? Is he intense? What's what's his personality? During those six, those sixty minutes, uh, I wouldn't say quiet, but he's like kind of, kind of calm. Um, he knows the that uh, the excitement of, of the game, so he's not gonna try and bring too much to our plate when it comes to that type of stuff. You know, he's gonna do what he has to do to get us ready for the game. And besides that, he won't really say much. I mean, he'll say something to us if we mess up on the call or something, but he won't get too high or too low. He's just gonna just let us, you know, do our thing and. If we're wrong, we're wrong. But besides that, he, he just lets us do us, really. Keegan Renault and then Lee Benson. Yeah, Nick, obviously now three weeks having Ronnie back, even just working with the ones in practice. Do you feel his presence now that he, he's been back and just how many more opportunities maybe you're getting um, in one-on-one -on -one situations and all that stuff? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely uh, feeling his presence. And I feel like the whole defense is as well, you know. That, that's a guy that just automatically comes in. You can just feel his impact. Um, you can see, like, a, a lot of people are starting to get free on, on the D-line with more one-on-ones because, you know, they're paying a lot of attention to him. So, you know, the impact that he has on the game, it, it just it's – so it's better for our defense. And, you know, I feel like because he's back, our, our defense is, is also better. So, you know, he's made a really big impact since he's come back on the team. Thanks, Nick. Okay, Lee Benson and then James Hale. Hey, Nick, for someone like you who rushes the quarterback as much as you do, I, I, I've noticed that in a couple key moments against Kansas, you have been asked to 
kind of take a step back a little bit and maybe do like a, you know, a spy technique on the quarterback. I think in that, that fourth down sack you had, I think it looked like you were in that position. So, uh, you know, against Oklahoma State, obviously with Spencer Sanders being one of those speedy type quarterbacks, uh, as a pretty big guy yourself, when you're asked to contain and, and maybe spy on these guys and, and have the ability to, to chase them down if you have to, uh, how does it make you feel knowing that like, you're, you know, you're not your typical pro-typical pro undersized type linebacker, you're a big dude, but you're being asked to, to take care of these quarterbacks that could potentially run away from it. How does it make you feel? Yeah, and I feel like that definitely goes to the type of training, <laughs> the type of training that you know Coach Wiley does. You know, helping us get faster, uh, so we can run with uh, quarterbacks like that, or you know, even running backs so, uh, such as that. So, you know, I feel like just you know having that versatility to do both um, is just really important for our defense. Have you been asked to do that all season long, or is that more recent? Even kind of asked to to spy some quarterbacks, just curious. It just, it really depends on who we're playing, really. If we feel like the, the quarterback can, can move a little bit, he'll, he'll ask me to spy some, keep an eye on him, but just really who we play. Thanks. Okay, James Hale and John Hoover. You know, Nick, the challenge this week is, you know, try to contain the speed that Oklahoma State has. Uh, they have unique speed at quarterback and unique speed at tailback, and Wallace, um, is a fantastic wide receiver. Talk about the challenge of the defense and what you guys have to do in the front seven to try to control all that speed this week. I just feel like we got to keep doing what we've been doing, getting pressure on the quarterback, you know, being disruptive up front. Uh, I feel like that, that ruins a lot of teams' game plans. So, I mean, you know, they have a great two backs in the backfield, you know, a receiver that can do a lot of things when he gets the ball in his hands. So we want to try to make the life easier for the back end and, and try to you know, be very disruptive so we don't give the, those skilled guys a, a lot of chances. Thanks, man. And John Hoover and then Barry Trammell. Hey, Nick, uh, I'm wondering if you guys, as, as a football player, do you ever go into a game knowing you're going to have a, a speed advantage or a physical advantage or whatever it may be? And then during the game, when you know you've got a guy kind of worn down or you know you've got him, you know, beaten or his head's down or whatever, you know that you're in his head or what's, what's that feeling like when that, what you've been practicing all week actually comes to, comes to happen in a game? Almost definitely. Cause I, I honestly do feel like we're the most, one of the most at least conditioned team in the country. We also, I feel like have one of the fastest defenses in the country. So, and I feel like that's a lot of pressure for an offense, you know, to deal with that type of stuff, especially up front. You're not going to see a lot of guys moving fast like the way we do. So um, I, I definitely feel like it, it's a lot of pressure on the offense. And, you know, we, we kind of live for that kind of stuff. So I, I definitely feel like it's an advantage for us. Do you feel that happen in games? Like like you see guys get down, whether it's blockers <laughs> or whatever, you just like, okay, we got them now. Yeah, I, I guess you can say that, yeah. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, Barry Trammell. Yeah, Nick, coming from Fort Lauderdale, I assume – you didn't know a whole lot about the Bedlam rivalry. Now that you've been a part of it and getting ready for another one this week, do you look at it as like a really emotional type rivalry or is it against a team that's just always good in the Big 12 and that stands in your way to, to get what you guys want? No, I, I most definitely think of it as a rivalry. You know, there's a lot of tradition going back to way before I was even born. So um, it doesn't really, really matter where I was from. Um, just knowing the, the history behind it and knowing it, how, how big of a rivalry game it is. And I just want to go all out for this program and, and my teammates and you know, help get, um, get the W for them. And last one, Parker Thune. Yeah, Nick, uh, I'm wondering about a guy in, uh, in Marcus Stripling. Seems like you can count on him for one big play uh, in the pass rush every game. What do you see from him? How has he grown from last year to this year? And uh, what can you say about uh, his ability to respond when called upon? No, I feel like Strip definitely, when, when, he, did, when he gets his opportunity, he, he tries to make the most of it. I mean, you can see uh, he's had a couple big plays these last couple of weeks. And um, he's just a guy that, you know, he's a really good pass rusher. And when we put him in there, that's what we expect him to do is get after the quarterback. So I feel like whenever he gets that opportunity to go in, I feel there's no, you know, drop off. I feel like he's just as good uh, to make a play as anybody else that we put in there. So.